This is our 26th COCP webinar. I'm Niti Daftari, a program manager at Transforming Paces, here on behalf of the Circle of Cleft Professionals. Uh, we have with us here today, all the way from Taiwan, uh, Dr. Lo, Rebecca Wang, and Linus Lee, uh, who are about to share uh, an interesting collaborative approach that they use with their cleft care partners um, in a resource constrained context, which, which includes the very innovative concept of virtual missions. Uh, just like we had uh, in our last webinar, we will be having simultaneous interpretation in Spanish today as well. Um, we have our two interpreters, uh, Benjamin and Eva, joining us from Chile. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you will see uh, an interpretation button. If you click on that button and select Spanish, you will be able to hear the rest of this webinar in Spanish. So please go ahead and uh, select the language of your choice. A few suggestions so you can make the most of this webinar today. If your bandwidth allows, please keep your video on. You can use the Zoom chat to type in uh, and let us know who you are and where you're from. If you could, uh, please display your Zoom screen name as your full name to make it easier for us to identify and connect with each other. Uh, while the presentation is on, we'll be keeping you on mute. Uh, but at any point during the course of this webinar, feel free to actively participate with questions and comments on chat and by using the reactions button at the bottom of your screen. Um, after the presentation is done, we'll open for questions, uh, which you can ask either via chat uh, or on video uh, after unmuting your microphone. As always, uh, we'll begin uh, this hour-long webinar with a short COCP update, followed by a panelist's presentation by Dr. Lo uh, from Changang Memorial Hospital and Rebecca Wang and uh, Linus Lee from Nudorf Craniofacial Foundation. Uh, this will last for roughly 25 minutes, uh, followed by questions and discussion for the remaining half hour or so. We have three core objectives uh, at the COCP, all of which are related to comprehensive cleft care with a focus on low and middle income countries. Our aim is to facilitate collaboration and networking to communicate the impact and learning that's happening within cleft care and to support the growth of local teams in implementing comprehensive care. Within the COCP, we are now over 500 members strong, uh, belonging to a wide range of specialties within cleft care uh, from 69 different countries around the world. Uh, on the right here, you can see um, that the COCP represents professionals from across multiple specialties within cleft care, including nutritionists, orthodontists, social workers, nurses, and so on. Uh, a majority of our members are surgeons and speech therapists who account for over half of COCP membership. Um, we are, of course, open um, always uh, to uh, growing our COCP community. So if you know someone who might benefit from or would be interested in joining us, please invite them to apply for membership uh, through our website. These are the 69 different countries from around the world uh, that all of you, our members, come from. Uh, the ones in green being the countries that we have the largest membership from. And a shout out to our, uh, to our folks for, who are staying up late tonight, especially with our, our guests coming from Taiwan. Uh, welcome, as well as, you know, we always need to acknowledge people on the West Coast of the United States or in Costa Rica who got up very early this morning. So welcome to everybody in between. We're super grateful uh, to our uh, the sponsors of the Circle of Clap Professionals. Again, if you've just joined, my name's Hugh Brewster. I'm in Toronto, Canada. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of Transforming Faces, but I'm here today on behalf of the Circle of Clap Professionals. And as you can see, uh, we have a number of NGO sponsors who are all really interested in comprehensive cleft care uh, who have made these webinars possible. Uh, but today, it's a brand new partner, a brand new member of the Circle of Clap Professionals, and that's Nordhoff uh, Craniofacial uh, Organization, NCF. Uh, and uh, along with their close partner, Changgang Cranial Facial Center. And, and as I mentioned, uh, they're all in Taiwan. Uh, Dr. Lunjo 
Uh, you'll, under, you'll hear from him a little bit later, but he's an expert in aesthetic and plastic surgery, cleft lip palate surgery, and manageable, uh, management of M- v- uh, VPD, uh, along with a bunch of other surgeries, which is really exciting. Uh, he's a professor of plastic and reconstructive surgery. He hosts really popular and informative uh, YouTube videos on the work that they're doing uh, and has been involved in training you know, experts around the world. Uh, so we're delighted to hear from him, along with the NGO leadership of uh, Ms. Rebecca Wang, who is a consultant at NCF and was a longtime CEO, along with her colleague, uh, Mr. Linus Lee, who's the deputy director of NCF and really who focuses on the international medical cooperation elements uh, of what NCF's up to. Do, uh, up to. So uh, we're delighted to have all three of our presenters here today. They're going to share the time uh, and then definitely are, are very looking much for looking forward to hearing your questions. I know for some of us, some of those partnerships that are happening in Asia, South, South Asia in particular, uh, are a little bit more of a mystery. We haven't been focusing on them over our 26 webinars, so we're delighted to learn more today and to, to really have an opportunity to talk a little bit more about some of those, those innovative partnerships and solutions that they've been coming up with even during the pandemic. Uh, so without further ado, we'll invite uh, Linus, I think Mr. Linus Lee will be able to uh, start sharing his screen uh, and we'll hear a little bit more about NCF and Changgung Cranial Facial Center. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Linus Lee, the Deputy Director of uh, the, de- the deputy director of NCF. So uh, thank you so much for having me today. And I'm going to give you a brief of Love Mexico, the cooperation between NCF Taiwan and Chang'e Memorial Hospital. So um, the founder of NCF is Dr. Samuel Nodov. He's an American surgeon. He arrived in Taiwan in 1959 and stayed in Taiwan for 40 years. Dr. Nordov is a pioneer of Taiwan's medical society. He set up many firsts in Taiwan, such as the first ICU, burn unit, cranial first center, et cetera. So he re- because of his contribution, he received many awards. Um, so one of the most important awards is Mananiac Lecturer Awards in 1994. Dr. Nordov retired in 1999 and he uh, went back to the United States and he passed away in the United States in 2018. So this is Dr. Nordov. And about NCF, we set up in 1989 and we have four major purposes. The first one is the patient's care. Uh, we really highlight on uh, to providing the comprehensive care with, for patients with uh, congenital and cranial facial deformity. And the second thing, is the public education because at that time Taiwan still has a lot of misunderstanding and uh, discrimination on the cut of patient. And we also work with our partners to do medical research and we started our international cleft program in 1998. So when we started this program, um, there or there were some backgrounds. Um, Taiwan used to be a aid recipient country. So that's the reason why Dr. Nordoff came to Taiwan and stayed in Taiwan for 40 years to help people. But as the economic development goes, uh, uh, goes up, uh, the Taiwanese people and Taiwanese NGOs start to realize that we actually have the capacity to help people in need, not only in Taiwan, but also outside this country. So that's why we started this program uh, in 1998. There are some three major values in our mind. One is the team-based approach because we, we believe that only a team rather than in individual specialty, only a compact team can bring the best uh, result for the patient. And the second thing is the capacity building. Uh, we invite the medical personnel uh, to Taiwan to get the training and when they uh, to, to learn the most up-to-date technique and when they return to their country, they can contribute to their patients. And the third thing is the long-term partnership um, because we believe only a long-term cooperation can bring, uh, can bring the substantial changes in the country. So this is our, our core value. We have several strategies. The first thing is medical mission. So we arrange around four to five medical missions every year. Each mission will be five to seven days. We invite the doctor, uh, surgeons, 
uh, nurses and anesthesiologists from Chang'e Memorial Hospital to join the mission. And if necessary, we also invite orthodontists and speech pathologists. Um, so, so far we have 87 times of medical mission in nine countries. Um, the second strategy is training. We invite the, the medical personnel from developing countries uh, come to Taiwan to Chang Kong uh, Criminal Facial Center and to learn the technique. And then NCF will sponsor for monthly allowance and the airfare. So when the doctors and nurses study in Taiwan, they have they don't need to worry about uh, the their finance. And if the cooperation goes well, then we have some follow up projects. We have a medical subsidy project. We donate sutures, instruments, and other uh, items. So in the end, we want to help them to set up the local cranial facial centers to provide sustainable and comprehensive care. And we also have the international patient project which means they have very severe corneal facial deformity and we're pretty much sure that they cannot get proper treatment in their country. So for example, this is uh, Bibi. Uh, she's from Pakistan and we had her to Taiwan to have surgery twice in 2011 and 2013. So you can see uh, she has a very severe facial cleft and after surgery, she has a totally different appearance. So this is the teams that we have in the country. So for example, in Cambodia, we work with the National Pediatric Hospital in Phnom Penh. And uh, in the Philippines, we based in Manila. And now we expand to the Southern provinces in Davao and Ozamis. And in China, because it's a huge country. So we trained 13 teams in uh, different provinces. And we have an excellent uh, speech project in Xi'an. And in Indonesia, we have two teams there, one in the capital, Jakarta, and the other one is in Lombok, where we just started a, a medical subsidy project there. And Mongolia is a wonderful thing there based in Ulaanbaatar. Um, they can uh, do their medical mission in the rural area by themselves for four or five times one year. And Vietnam is our first location in our, in our project. We based in Ho Chi Minh City, and then we expand to Hanoi in 2018. And in Pakistan, we have a speech uh, project with our uh, teams there in Lahore. So basically this, uh, this program is the partnership between NCF and Chang'e Memorial Hospital. So NCF is a professional NGO and Chang'e Criminal Center is one of the best medical center in the world dedicated to corneal facial deformity. So how does this work? So basically, NCF takes care of the resources, a collection, and all the administration work. So we reach to international NGOs, the government, the private sectors, the citizen donors to get the fund, to get the resource. And then we deal with all the administration and logistics preparation. We get things done. So the Chang'e Professional Center are focusing, uh, is focusing on medical part. So they do wonderful training for doctors and nurses from developing countries. They uh, dispatch their uh, uh, me medical personnel to join our medical mission. And they also uh, has the annual uh, medical symposium called Chang'e Forum. So this partnership to empower the local medical teams so that they can provide comprehensive care for their patient. And in the end, we hope we can help them to set up the local perennial facial foundations. So the foundations can work with the, the medical teams together, just like NCF and Chang'e. So we have three uh, cases here. Um, in Mongolia, we started the program in 2008. And before the cooperation, they can only do less than 100 surgery cases every year and only on unilateral uh, lip repair. But after the cooperation, now they can do 450 every year and they can do all kinds of clap related surgery. And they even now can do my Korsha surgery by themselves. And in, in the Philippines, they are a very uh, compact team there. So medical part is very good. So they also start their social and psychological support part 
So they set up a parent support group and we work with them to arrange more online events, particularly during the pandemic. And in Vietnam, this is our first uh, country in our program. So we have two teams there, one in Hanoi, one in Ho Chi Minh City. Both are very good, can do 450 to 550 every year. So we sponsor them with, with medical subsidy uh, project to support the cost of surgery, name, and speech. And then we also provide special feeding bottles so that the, uh, the class babies can get enough nutrition. And we also have a Vietnamese uh, Facebook fan page to provide accurate information and knowledge for local parents. So uh, during the pandemic, we have uh, uh, online medical mission. Um, we have some details we will go back later. And we also have the donation project. But what we want to share is that we found uh, because the pandemic, there's very few international medical team can go to the countries. So the local parents, the local patients have to have their surgeries by local teams, which they can help our teams to get the recognition from the parents. So when you have a good team, your teams can get improved and get recognition from the local parents is a great opportunity. And we, we found that this is a very interesting phenomenon during the pandemic. So here's the conclusion. I think why this model can work. Uh, the, one of the most important thing is that we all agree we have to follow the team-based approach and we need to have a team there to provide comprehensive care. The second thing is to pick up the right person. And this is, uh, this is a very important part. And this is also a very challenging part. How to have the right person to work with, with us is very important and very challenging. The third thing is to get the support from the directors and superintendents of the hospitals, because when they are supportive, then our program can go much more smoothly in terms of administration and finance. The last but not least is the country's economy. We found that when the country's economic condition, if they can, if it can go up well, then the local, the, the parents are more willing to find better surgery and better treatment, which our teams can provide. And they can help the teams to get recognition from the parents, which is one of the most important factors in our program. So this is the, the, the last slide. Um, this is Un Chen Hong. Uh, she's from Cambodia. We met her in 2000 when, when, when she was three years old. So in the past 20 years, uh, we accompany her from a baby to a lady. And we, we have provided her lip surgery, palate surgery, ABG, OGS. And we also support her school fee to help her finish her, her college. So it's a long journey. And we found that during the challenging journey, only, only love can make full. And only when we go together, then we can reach further. Thank you. Thank you, Linus. Thank you, uh, Rebecca. That was uh, very insightful. I think we've got a lot to follow up on, but but not yet. <laughs> Before we do uh, ask some questions, uh, we're really delighted to have Dr. Lo uh, from uh, Changgang uh, Craniofacial Center to also present uh, some of his reflections and observations from his experience in partnership both with you and and uh, and at the Craniofacial Center. So, Dr. Lo, please. Uh, we'll just get you to unmute. Okay, can Perfect. you hear me? We hear you perfectly. Well okay. done. Okay, uh, I'm happy to uh, to be in this meeting, and I would like to uh, introduce to you uh, how we uh, perform the international crab care uh, uh, from Chang'an uh, crab cranial facial team, and also uh, in cooperation. Uh, with the Nodal Cranial Facial Foundation. And this is our team. You can see that uh, in 
in Changgen Hospital, we have a huge team, uh, many surgeons, orthodontists. Uh, we do have speech pathologists, uh, coordinator, social worker, and we also have a uh, research personnel uh, recently. And uh, every year, we also uh, are responsible to train international fellow uh, in our team. So this is Dr. Nordoff and uh, already introduced uh, by Linus. Uh, and we, we started to, uh, to perform international crab mission uh, from 1998. And uh, every year we perform three to five times, uh, mainly in the uh, Asian countries, sometimes go to a long way to, uh, to South America or Mid America, but mostly uh, in Asian country. And usually we, uh, we fix in a target hospital. We don't go to many, many hospitals, but just in, in certain hospitals where we try to have a, a long-term collaboration. We try to see uh, the, the, the development, the, the, the outcome uh, from the collaboration. So we can see here from 1998 and now all the way continue. Now in 2020, we have the pandemic, so we stopped uh, going out. Uh, we do, uh, we, we now, we perform online mission uh, since uh, 2020. And just uh, an example that this is a crab mission to, uh, to Vietnam. And uh, we always start with uh, uh, the patient evaluation. And uh, we also ask our, the local, uh, the specialist, a surgeon, uh, the speech pathologist or orthodontist to join together. And uh, uh, we do not perform many surgery. We try to focus on training. So when I do the surgery, uh, the local doctor will, will, sub, will assist the operation. And also uh, I will let the, uh, the local surgeon to perform the surgery and I will supervise. So uh, through this uh, uh, so-called uh, two-way uh, training, I, I think uh, I can see that uh, they they are they are improving uh, year by year. Uh, this is a mission uh, to uh, to Indonesia, and uh, you can see that uh, there's uh, not only Chang'an uh, Hospital but also Nodo Foundation, and there are also a Taiwan IHA group and also uh, AMDA group from Japan and also the local uh, regional dental society. They also, so uh, each time we, we will invite uh, some other team to join together in, uh, in this collaboration. So hopefully the crab here will also get attention uh, from the uh, local, uh, also regional uh, support group. Uh, this is the mission uh, to Mongolia. And uh, we are very happy to have this team because uh, I, I found that this team had big improvement uh, from the beginning. Now this is, uh, we, we, uh, we have been there for, for about uh, 12 years. And each time uh, I can see uh, that they are doing a great job. And many of the staff uh, in Mongolia, they actually came to uh, Chang'an for training. And also we have uh, support from the local, uh, local people. So in our mind, the goal of mission, uh, we have three stages. Uh, first is to, uh, to have the surgery for patients with credit and palate. And this uh, will uh, also uh, an educational purpose. And second stage, uh, we would like to train the local staff and each time we, we, we went there, uh, the local staff will learn together from, with us. And also they will, uh, they will be supported to come to Chang'an, uh, short term or long term, uh, to learn the surgical technique and also uh, the, the team care. And then uh, in the final stage, uh, we hope to establish local team. And this is uh, so-called the, the multiple specialist uh, 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 that include not only surgeon but also dentist and speech pathologist. So uh, we we also spend time to educate people there in the uh, in the uh, in the local hospital, so that you can see that I give presentation to 
uh, to a large audience that not only include the uh, the, the crept in uh, in the local hospital, but also uh, the medical student. Well, the, from the surgical perspective, uh, we also had three stages. The first, just a primary lip and palate repair. And this is the most uh, initial uh, uh, purpose uh, so that they can do a good uh, in a primary lip and palate surgery well. Then uh, we hope to gradually upgrade to uh, second stage, which is available bone graft or the veropharyngeal insufficiency treatment and also uh, the closure of the oral nasal fistula. We found that this uh, oral nasal fistula is very common in the local, uh, in the local team, in the local uh, hospital. And this will have uh, the dental and speech personnel uh, together and uh, working together. And then uh, lastly, we, uh, we wish to train them to do a secondary revision because there are many uh, deformed, secondary deformity in the local and also maxillary hypoplasia uh, uh, is common. So uh, we, we wish to do uh, orthodontic surgery and this also requires a team and also a quite expensive facility. Now, uh, we have a problem met. Uh, this uh, include uh, this uh, uh, aspect. Uh, where the node of cranial facial foundation will help to, to solve the problem for more, for uh, for this, uh, this like uh, transportation. Uh, even some uh, local patients do not have money to come to the hospital for treatment. So, so these uh, kind of things really uh, need uh, the, the foundation to, to help to solve the problem. And also a uh, material instrument, uh, we sometimes we will bring uh, this uh, instrument or material to support them. And for the surgical part, uh, uh, the problem that I have observed, uh, there are many, like deep dehiscence, oral nasal fistula in the palate, there are many. And also uh, the speech problem, uh, veropharyngeal insufficiency, uh, secondary lip node deformity, and also the mid-face retrusion. And this all required to be uh, treated. And, and this has to be, uh, you know, through the education, through the, uh, uh, you know, long-term collaboration so that they can gradually improve their skill. You can see here, the, there are many patients that I have met uh, in this country, in, in Pakistan, in Vietnam, uh, Cambodia. Uh, so these are all the problems that I have seen uh, in, in my trip. So I hope that, that this problem can gradually uh, be reduced. So, we had the so-called symposium uh, in the local hospital. So I tried to uh, spend not only spend time not only for surgery but also for education. So uh, the, the, uh, this is the the teaching course in Cambodia, and and also I found that uh, that because uh, uh, premature protrusion is very severe, and I can see that this uh, Pakistan uh, surgeon can do this lip tapping quite well, although they don't have research called nasal alveolar molding, but they can, uh, they can learn this tapping and also teach the father. You can see that uh, the father and the son, uh, after this tapping, the premature protrusion can gradually be improved so that such, uh, surgery can be safe uh, without the uh, lip dehiscence. Now, so bilateral lip repair is always uh, an issue that I have uh, traveled uh, to many of these countries. This is one uh, operation that I that I demonstrate in, in uh, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, that very protruding premaxilla. So I I, I I I educate them to to do this uh, so-called rapid premaxillary molding. Uh, during the general anesthesia and during the operation. So just gradually uh, keep pushing that, that you can see that they gradually, uh, that the premaxilla can become soft without fracture. Once this premaxilla becomes soft, then we can uh, perform uh, surgery uh, 
uh, safely. Now you can see here, after the uh, the rapid molding, uh, this premaxilla become uh, retruded, and then so we can uh, perform a, a nice operation. Uh, this is the patient follow up, uh, a nice result uh, without any uh, dehesions. This is also a patient uh, from other country. Uh, we have to bring the patient to the the Chang'an, uh, to for the surgery, and also we do the same uh, management and get good result. So when I was in uh, like Cambodia, I, I saw this patient, so I have to uh, help them to uh, to treat this patient. And during the process, they also see uh, how I perform the surgery. Uh, certainly, I don't want to see this uh, this uh, problem uh, many times uh, in my trip. And this is a very difficult case uh, uh, from Indonesia and uh, lip dehesions, complete lip dehesions. And uh, uh, the local doctor decided to send the patient to, uh, to Taiwan, uh, Chang'e Memorial Hospital. And then we perform this uh, operation to set back the premaxilla and then do the operation. So this patient uh, get uh, treated uh, in Taiwan. And then uh, one month later, they, he, he came back home uh, with, a, uh, with a nice uh, repair lip. So uh, each time uh, in the operation, uh, we have a full team to go there. And the local team also had a full team to, to join the mission together. So this is uh, a quite a nice uh, interaction between the, uh, the two teams. And we try to bring a new concept uh, because we have uh, been through, uh, you know, many years of experience. Uh, so in Chang'an, we, we did uh, two times of re repair now, changed to one time, how to do a good uh, surgery. And so the local team do not need to experience the same problem that we have experienced years before. So good re repair one time, good pilot repair one time. So you, you don't need to do any uh, revision uh, in uh, when, when the patient is growing. So these are the uh, training of the seed doctor. We call it seed doctor because they go back to their country. They can be, uh, become uh, an experienced surgeon and also uh, they can be responsible to train the young surgeon in their country. So uh, we, we that, that's why I said that uh, we wish to go back to the uh, to the same uh, hospital to see what happened uh, in their training system in the, for their younger surgeon. If they need a further uh, education, probably they can also come to uh, Chang'an uh, for, uh, for the fellowship training. So each year we have uh, Chang'an Symposium and then uh, many uh, surgeons from the Asian country, they, they will come to, uh, to this uh, Chang'an Forum typically five uh, three days of the, uh, so the, of the symposium with lecture and also surgical demonstration. And also uh, the, the orthodontist can come uh, learn how to do the orthodontic treatment. So this is for surgeon and for orthodontist. So this is 2025. You can see the huge number of participants uh, from the neighboring country. And, uh, and we would also like to thank uh, Nodal Foundation and other uh, NGO to help to uh, sponsor this, uh, this surgeon to participate uh, the Chang'an Forum. But because uh, in the, since 2020, we don't have uh, this uh, opportunity to have so-called the, the physical meeting. So we, we turn to a webinar. And, uh, and last year we have a, webinar and this year in November, we again have the, the Sangam Forum and webinar. This is an online meeting. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we also uh, recently established a seminar room. Uh, we every uh, two to three weeks, uh, we have this seminar. And this is a, a 24th seminar will be, uh, will be, uh, uh, will occur in, uh, September 19, and in this meeting, uh, we invite a doctor from Pakistan, Dr. Fayaz, to present his experience of fistula repair. And uh, certainly, uh, 
uh, we most of the uh, seminar given uh, by our our staff, but we also uh, invite a doctor from outside to uh, to uh, to give uh, the lecture. So we are we are uh, happy to see the improvement. This is a Cambodian uh, team, the group. They initially only have surgeon, but gradually uh, have orthodontists and even have an orthodontist from Malaysia to come uh, to to support the dental care. And also, uh, we are uh, you know uh, welcome by uh, by by local doctor. Uh, from in Mongolia and also in Thailand. And we also support uh, the recognition from our Taiwanese government uh, uh, for the for the crab surgery we have performed. And uh, these are some of the uh, country and team that we have collaborated uh, from the previous years. And uh, again, uh, we focus on long-term follow-up. Uh, we go to, this is a patient from Cambodia. Uh, 20 years ago, we went there and then we again went there uh, each time and then we observed the grow up. For example, uh, this patient, uh, <clears throat> we, we did the first operation and then we did the final operation. This is also Nazi surgery. And these are uh, accompanied by the local surgeon and also uh, the local orthodontist, one orthodontist teacher from Malaysia uh, and also the mother. Uh, so this is uh, perhaps the first orthodontic surgery in the country. So this uh, patient uh, is very nice uh, to have a good result uh, with a uh, with beautiful smile on her face. And another patient that uh, uh, Linus had already uh, talked about, uh, we, we also did the first uh, lip repair and pilot repair. And, and then we finally we re revised the lip and nose now she become uh, she studied in medical school and become a beautiful lady now. Uh, so these are some of the things that we have done uh, uh, in uh, in our international crab <clears throat> uh, crab mission. And uh, uh, again, uh, Mongolian team is one team that I uh, I like very much because they improve a lot and they are mostly uh, maxillofacial surgeon. And we do have some problem, but we can always uh, solve the problem finally, even in the, in the international airport. And each time we do not uh, do many surgery, but we focus on education. So, so for example, in this, uh, in this team, uh, in this mission, we only do maybe 20 operation uh, in, in one week. So th this is uh, some of the the pro uh, one of the program that we uh, we have done, and this is a team uh, in in Mongolia and uh, and again in Mongolia. So so I would like to stop here uh, with the uh, our group photo uh, with the Mongolian team. So I would uh, be happy to answer any question that you have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lo. Uh, and if you join us along the way, uh, again, we're delighted uh, to have, uh, for the first time, a uh, webinar presentation from colleagues in Taiwan, uh, both from Nordhof uh, Craniofacial Foundation and then from Changgung uh, Hospital with Dr. Lo. And uh, as always, yes, we've left lots of time to ask some questions about this innovative model, this partnership between an NGO that raises funds in Taiwan, uh, as well as with the Craniofacial Center that really has a focus on education and training. Uh, so please, if you'd like to, uh, if you have the bandwidth to and are able to uh, activate your video uh, or sign, put your hand up saying you'd like to, to ask a question, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, you're also welcome uh, to write a question or a comment in the chat. Uh, that can be in English or in Spanish. We'll have some interpretation for that. Uh, and we'd love to, to, to know what, do you, what, what are your questions uh, for our panel? And I'll get started. I'll, I'll have one uh, for both for all of you right now. I mean, so you you uh, you both have uh, or all three of you have emphasized the importance of a team based approach. Uh, and uh, you know, often in my experience, that team based approach really requires at least the support uh, of a surgeon. Uh, you know, that, that surgeon has to really buy in and and understand you know the importance of all the other teams. 
Uh, Dr. Lo, how have you gone about explaining, you know, why you work in a team at Changgung and why as a surgeon, that's really important for that accountability and that group to work together as opposed to one person sort of, uh, and other people do some other things along the side. Uh, <clears throat> uh, your, your question is the, uh, the, the, the sponsorship from the hospital, is it correct? My question is more philosophical. When you're training, let's say a surgeon, you know, uh, who, who's really interested in learning more about a team-based approach, how do you mm -hmm. go about explaining why a team-based approach is important? Why, why is comprehensive care <coughs> led by a team important to you? What do you say to these young yeah. surgeons as they learn? Okay, because uh, when each time we visit the local team, uh, for example, in the beginning, we do lip surgery, pilot surgery, uh, gradually they found that, oh, they need to do a dental care. They need to do orthodontic treatment. So I must admit that all the teams started with surgeon only. They only interested in doing surgery in the local uh, hospital. But gradually they have the problem. They need, they know that they have to teach, they have to solve the problem of dentition, speech, and also when they grow up, they need to solve the problem of the maxillary retrusion, the dental malocclusion. And also they ha also have many patients with problems such as uh, the lip and nose deformity that came to their team because uh, each team after long-term collaboration, they gradually become experienced surgeon. They, they, they have many patients in their, their country but they do have problem that they, they need to solve. So they will send their, uh, their speech pathologists come into Changden to learn how to, uh, to learn how to, how to do this uh, speech uh, evaluation. And then uh, surgical wise, I can teach them <clears throat> the, the, how to do uh, the very fine operation to solve the problem. So these are, these are uh, interaction after a couple of years, gradually they understand that they really need uh, to do this. Uh, of course, they need to have a good uh, team, uh, you know, team member that they can join the team uh, to work together. So, so I think th this is, uh, so that, that, that's why I, I like to focus on a fixed hospital rather than going to many, many spots in the world, then you can do only surgery, not, on, not, not the team care concept. That came through clearly. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. Uh, Linus or Rebecca, what would you add about this? Uh, how you really uh, form surgeons or people into that sense of a team-based approach being critical for comprehensive cleft care? Um, I think I, I like to say thank you to uh, Changgen Craniofacial team. Actually, to our co co uh, cooperation lasts for uh, more than 30 years. Okay, and uh, our co cooperation from domestic program to international program, from medical to psychosocial, because uh, I think we follow the concept of Dr. Samuel Nodo because he, 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 he very focused and very um, emphasized the team approach can get the best result. And uh, it's Changgen, they have more than 30 years experience and they show the result. And also all the um, international fellow come to Taiwan, I mean the, the state doctor come to Taiwan, we, uh, uh, NCO always uh, organized the psychosocial program. Always have many, many activities like a summer camp, feminist mm -hmm. folk group activity, the barbecue uh, uh, activity. <laughs> and we invite those uh, uh, international fellow, the, the, the C doctor to join our program. And they see the result. Right. So they, they can believe the comprehensive care can get the best product. 
Thank you. So there is that that really that importance of modeling. So I mean, I think we heard from Dr. Lowe that people naturally will understand that it's more than just a surgical process. But I think seeing that modeled uh, really, you're saying, brings them along to understand that it's not just a strict surgical uh, based on procedure. There is the psychosocial element. There's the other disciplines that are coming together and, and that team-based approach being critical. Uh, thank you. Uh, Erica Bo Bostock from South Africa has a question uh, for Dr. Lowe. Your surgical results are very beautiful. Uh, can you speak a little bit about the role of speech therapy? How accessible is it? How do you build a team-based approach if there are not sufficient, let's say, speech therapists uh, who are trained in cleft care? Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, there are certain team, they, they also uh, understand completely the, the importance of speech uh, therapy, uh, speech pathology. Uh, for example, uh, the team from Hanoi, uh, uh, they, they send their doctor, they actually a surgeon, they assigned that uh, you you need to do uh, you need to uh, learn the speech part, and also another example is uh, another surgeon uh, in in Mongolian team. They both came to uh, Chang'an, uh, spend some time with our speech pathologists. Uh, in the beginning, they also they learn how to evaluate so-called per perceptual evaluation, but then they uh, they. They know that they need instrument uh, like nasal pharyngoscope. Then uh, the Nodal Foundation will help to, uh, you know, to to uh, to purchase and get a nasal pharyngoscope and send them and uh, and bring uh, bring back to uh, to Hanoi and also to Ulaanbaatar. Uh, and then we also will come to uh, their hospital to check if they're doing good, if they are doing good job. Okay. Mm -hmm for assessment, uh, for uh, suggestion of uh, surgical uh, treatment. And uh, we, from our experience, there are two operations, fellow or pharyngeal threat. So they will learn how to select patient uh, to do a specific procedure. So, so through this uh, uh, bilateral uh, <clears throat> interaction, I think they, 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 they improve a lot, yeah. So Thank you, Dr. Lowe. So it sounds like within your three-stage process, you know, different equipment might become more necessary as the, the team grows and as they experience more, uh, you know, they have more experience with different, different conditions or different processes, then potentially then you can say, ah, yes, you know, this scope would be very helpful. And that's where the partnership with, N, uh, with NCF can come in to be able to potentially provide that, but not necessarily, there's just a checklist of all the equipment you might ever need. Start off with that and see what happens. I think you're saying it's a step-by-step -step approach. And as the need emerges and you know the people, then there became that opportunity to activate some of the fundraising and resourcing that comes through NCF. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes, it's very true. Thank you. Um, anyway, others, please feel free if you have other questions. Thank you, uh, uh, Erica from South Africa. You can you can post some more. Um, as we're waiting, I I, I mean, it's, it definitely struck me, uh, you know, that that well, I've heard many presentations about different missions that happen. Uh, you know, you were very clear on saying that actually in this mission, it's not we're trying to tell you that we did so many surgeries or so many cases, but you're actually uh, highlighting that you did so few. Um, Tell me about that model uh, of of really. I, how do you know when it's you know um, how do you how do you sort of keep yourself accountable not to just come in and do the surgeries but to really allow the local team uh, to to progress to take on those cases in the right amount of time <coughs> and really giving that amount of time that required for the teaching and training and mentorship that's happening uh, through your through your uh, your mission. Uh, <clears throat> For example, when we uh, visited uh, Ho Chi Minh City, and the, the first day uh, we will see the patient in the clinic. So typically they will come maybe 80 patients. Okay, 80 family will bring their children come to our, our clinic. So we evaluate them one by one. And then, uh, and then discuss with the local team. If this is a simple, uh, for example, in complete credit, I said, can you do it? If you can do it, we don't, we don't need to schedule the operation at, at this mission. If this is a difficult unilateral complete with wide, with wide uh, separated uh, 
alveolus. Then, then, then I said, okay, I do this operation. Uh, so you can see how I do it because this is a little bit more difficult case. And even more difficult is bilateral with pro protruding premaxilla that I just mentioned. So uh, they need to uh, so-called uh, see how I do it. Certainly in the clinic, I, I can see uh, patients with complication, palate dehiscence or you know, sm a small fistula or even a big fistula. I think this uh, even small bit or big fistula, th this is the result of the, uh, of the surgical technique, which is not, uh, not good enough. So, so this, this kind of clinic will last for the whole afternoon, many hours, and gradually they, they learn from this process. And I discussed with them what cases you wish to schedule in this, in, 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 in this mission. And, and they will choose, they will, they, will, they will pick up the cases that they wish to learn. I think uh, how to fix the fissure uh, is a common uh, problem and also a difficult situation for them to learn. So, I, so this is also uh, a, a good uh, uh, demonstration for the operation for them. So, so uh, and then we see a patient with a uh, very uh, retruded uh, maxilla. I said, well, then this patient will, will require an orthognathy surgery. Can you do it? No. Okay. If if you cannot do it, then you need to send uh, people to to my hospital to learn uh, orthodontic treatment, and then to do to learn uh, orthognathy surgery uh, training. Right. Okay. So it comes and back to your, your three stage your three stage uh, setup again, being very rigorous about you yeah. know, what happens when, but also really emphasizing local uh, experience yeah. during the missions as opposed <laughs> to you know a number as many cases as we can get through. For example, you know that's fairly exciting. Yeah, I do not need to finish eighty cases, but I just need to do maybe 20, 25 cases. You know the rest of the case they they can they can uh, they can take care. But they can pick up uh, the cases that they wish to see, they wish to learn. Yeah. Thank you. Um, for NCF, I mean, we, we talked a little bit uh, you, you, in your your, uh, your your learnings about how important it is to have the right person, uh, and, and also we saw in Dr. Joe, uh, Dr. Lowe's uh, understanding just that idea of the working with the the whole medical team, and sometimes uh, the hospital administration, you know, can either be super supportive of what the cleft team is doing or can make it very complicated. So uh, can you comment a little bit along with Alexis Barr from Toronto? Uh, what are a couple characteristics you look for to know whether someone's going to be a good partner in this learning uh, journey that Dr. Lowe is talking about? Uh, how to choose a, a right person? Yeah, some, some idea. What are some characteristics that make uh, a good partner it's, for it's, you? It's, it's very challenging. Yes, I think uh, um, the person uh, he had um, passion for cleft patients very important, and uh, he identified the concept of comprehensive care. And uh, uh, I think uh, he can uh, just um, how to say to overcome a lot of difficulties. <laughs> yes. So so um so we try. I think I have to say to, to say thank you again to the Changen team, like a mentor uh, Dr. Lunzoro, because uh, those uh, supervisor uh, always uh, encourage those uh, um, uh, state doctors. They can get the emotional support, mm. and we also. Uh, they we empower them through uh, Changen Forum. Forum, okay, so they can keep keep uh, they ha the having uh, passion is very important. Right. Yeah. So so it's hard work <coughs> to implement a team based approach for comprehensive care, uh, yes. and so that connection to Changeng to NCF through things like potential to to observe, as well as these <coughs> ongoing forums, you're saying that those are really important connection points that allow someone to keep motivated through the difficulties mm. of implementing a new mm. way of doing things. 
Mm. Yeah, we mm. even have to uh, help them to overcome the like uh, um, the bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, yes, very difficult. Uh, yeah, bureaucracy are uh, difficult. We, have, so we, we went to see uh, the, the director, the superintendent. To, sure. Yeah, this the, 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 the political problem. journey is very important. I know Dr. Lowe has one last comment. And we're coming to the top of the hour. Uh, Dr. Lowe, please. Yes, uh, I think to uh, regarding the selection of the uh, adequate seat doctor um, in the beginning is not easy, difficult. But but uh, gradually we we will we will know that uh, who are the good candidate. And uh, this surgeon, you know, they we call correct the first time they came they came to Changgen, the first time they, they they go back to do their practice and they keep finding uh, some more problem. Then they will ask for second time to come to Changgen, okay? Even third time to come because each time they will learn a, a different uh, a different kind of operation. So now we know that these, these are really a good good person and good team. So we will keep collaborating and we will give the continuous support for them. Thank you, Dr. Lo. And uh, Rebecca and Linus, I think your point is very well taken that it is not just technical skill in speech therapy or in dentistry or surgery that is critical, but that element of being able to overcome uh, obstacles of working well together, of having good communication and navigating bureaucracy. I mean, I think probably everyone on this call can acknowledge how important that is to maintain the sustainability and the growth of a comprehensive cleft care team. It's not simple and it's not as simple as just learning uh, how to do technically good, good, good procedures or, or, or a good case uh, study. So uh, thank you. We're at the top of the hour. Niti, we'll, we'll, we'll zip over just to, to end our time. We always uh, want to make sure we respect your time. Thank you for giving it up today. A huge uh, thank you to Dr. Lowe, to Ms. Rebecca, and Mr. Linus uh, for their, their insights and sharing really of a long history. This was a very short uh, morsel <laughs> we got of an extensive history, uh, but even that transition from being more of a recipient uh, country or, or context of, of training to being a trainer is very inspiring uh, and, and uh, you know, world-renowned. Down, definitely. Uh, going from here, Niti, what's happening next? Oh, you're on mute, Niti. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Lo, Rebecca, and Linus for this very interesting and mind-opening presentation and uh, discussion. Um, uh, the COCP uh, YouTube channel is where you can access all of our previous webinars, including this one, which will be posted soon. Uh, we've also created uh, some playlists which you might find helpful. Uh, our most recent one being the playlist for the solutions for CCC uh, COVID and Beyond conference, which was held in June. Uh, so if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Circle of Cleft Professionals, uh, so you can have immediate access to any videos that we post. We'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to our next webinar, which will be held uh, later this month on 30th of September, uh, when we will have uh, five renowned orthodontic and dental um, uh, panelists uh, from uh, the Sri Ramchandra Institute of Higher Education and Research, that is uh, Srihar from uh, Chennai, India. Um, who uh, will during the webinar uh, explore an integrated approach to promoting oral health that is based on patient specific uh, treatment needs. Uh, so we hope to see you all uh, fairly soon again. Uh, beyond our YouTube channel, uh, you can also follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at the rate Clef Circle. Uh, if you have any webinar topic uh, or presenter suggestions, uh, any queries or else would like to share articles or information for our website, please email us on info at cleftcircle.org. So with that, uh, thank you everyone for uh, all of you who joined in today. Thank you, Dr. Lo, Rebecca and Linus for your lovely presentation. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you all very soon for our next webinar. Thanks everybody. Welcome to the newcomers. We're glad you're here and uh, definitely share, share with your colleagues, you know, about, especially colleagues who have had experience hosting uh, missions, 
you know, uh, there could be some good learning, some good things you might be able to apply to your own context from Dr. Lowe, from Linus and Rebecca's presentation as well. We're delighted you made an hour, uh, uh, took an hour out today for this professional development and networking. Uh, again, I think as we heard, there are many challenges in implementing comprehensive cleft care. So I think these kinds of opportunities to hear from one another help us to focus our minds and also reach out when we need some support in moving forward and seeing these sustainable movements grow in each, uh, each country in which we're, we're, uh, we're activated today. So thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Thank you.